We have covered many of the basics of programming. In these last several days for this course, we want to look more at numerical functions, that is, at um, numerical integration, root finding, optimization, simulation. So as we transition into that area, it's useful to have a few words about numerical accuracy and program efficiency. Computers do have inherent limitations. Now generally, uh, with the programs, and we've, we've spoken about efficiency issues with writing programs, there are almost always two important issues that are um, under consideration and they are accuracy and speed, especially with numerical simulations, any sort of numerical computations. You, you certainly want the, want the program to be uh, accurate and, and fast, especially if you have large amounts of data. Speed becomes an issue. Now, most people will just generally assume that computers are perfectly accurate. Actually, this isn't true. The way that uh, floating number, floating point numbers, real numbers are represented in a machine does create rounding errors. They're infinitesimally small, but uh, sometimes they can uh, be, dis be disruptive and be confusing in terms of their apparent inconsistencies, even at very small levels. So here we're going to look at how computers represent numbers and how this affects the accuracy of the computational results. We'll also, uh, we have spent quite a bit of time uh, looking at speeding things up. That's always an issue. So we're going to continue to discuss the time it takes to perform a computation and what, what things you can do to, uh, to speed things up. Okay, and then finally, we're going to look at memory limitations on computation efficiency. Okay, well, here's a quick primer on how machines represent numbers. Now, uh, the computer architecture really has been largely unchanged for almost 60 years, the John von Neumann architecture, where computers use switches to encode information. They use switches that are sometimes called on and off switches, a zero, which is a, an off, or a one, which is an on, and a single on-off switch is often called a bit, B-I-T. And the way that numbers, symbols, anything are encoded in computers generally are in terms of combinations of these ones and zeros coded together as strings. So here's a few simple terms. So an on-off indicator, as I mentioned, is a bit. Eight bits are a byte, B-Y-T-E. Now, integers, numbers can uh, come in different forms. Um, integers are numbers that don't have trailing decimal points, whole numbers. So, usually a fixed number of bytes are used to represent a single integer, usually four or eight. The representation of integers on your computer is done at a very, very fundamental level, and you and R have no control over it. It's tied to the architecture of the hardware that you're, that you're using. But there, there are some general things we can say. The, the largest integer that you can represent on your computer is known as maxint, M-A-X-I-N-T. R records the value of maxint on your computer in a special variable called dot machine, machine with a capital M. And you can express it in R. You can show what the value of dot machine is right here. Dot machine, the maximum integer is 2,147,000,000. Forty-seven. If a number is integer valued as opposed to a real number with decimal points, it's more efficient from a machine point of view to store it as an integer. 
In practice, though, R treats integers the same way it treats real numbers for which it uses a floating point representation. So let's talk a little bit about real numbers and how they're represented in a, in a, on a computer. The floating point representation is based on what's called binary scientific notation. That's binary scientific notation, where we, would, we might represent a value for a number x as b sub o dot b sub 1 b sub 2 times 2 to the nth power, where b, b sub o, b sub 1, b sub 2 are all zeros or 1s. This number, b sub o, which is going to be a 0 or a 1, dot b sub 1, b sub 2, is the mantissa, and m is the exponent. So this is the way it looks to us, the way we're used to seeing it. R uses this scientific e notation to represent numbers, and what this means is basically 1.2 times 10 to the third power. So e is read as 10 raised to the power of 3 in this case. It's not the exponential. Don't be confused. Don't confuse e with the exponential. Now, we're forced to limit the size of the mantissa and the exponent. So because we do that, we limit the precision and range of real numbers that we're able to work with. We still have a very a vast range, but there are limitations. It, with double precision, 8 bytes are used to represent floating point numbers. One bit is used for the sign, positive or negative. 52 bits are used for the mantissa, a very large number. 52, a string of 52 zeros or ones can be used for the mantissa, and then 11 bits for the exponent. So the exponent can take on values from minus 1023 to positive 1024. So notice a couple of effects from this. Um, for example, dividing by zero is undefined, but you, you can do that.